Welcome, True Hope family. It's exciting to be together. Welcome to those people watching online. We are in Ephesians, and let's start with a word of prayer before we dig into the word. Holy God, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for your word, but apart from the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand what it is you are saying to us and what it means. So we ask you, to open our eyes and our heart and our mind to what you have in store for us right now and what it is you want to teach us. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart that is hungry for your word and help us to understand what it is you're saying. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Ephesians 1. We're, st we're going to be in here for a while. I'm going to do two verses today, though. So, that's all good. So, we start, we're in, uh, no, that's not true. We're going to do one first. <laughs> I know, no, no, first four, sorry. I got myself mixed up. So, here we are. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, and the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That's where we're going to stop. Today we're looking at hope that just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, him in love. So we learned that Paul wrote this to Gentile Christians in Ephesus, and there's Jews and Gentiles in this congregation, but he is making it very clear. And this whole thing, verse 3 through 14, is just a pouring out of a doxology. He's writing this when he's in jail, and he's just pouring out praise. The first three uh, 3 through 6 is praising God, and then 7 through 12 is praising Jesus, and 13 and 14 is praising the Holy Spirit. It's all one sentence in Greek. He is just basically just flowing with this praise toward God, and he is blessing God, speaking well of God, because God is speaking well of us because of Jesus, and he's already given us every spiritual blessing. We've learned that, and that means that whether we're a baby Christian or a mature Christian, all those blessings are available. Now how we live that out and how we are able to uh, use them, that may change. But that's what God has done. But it's all in Christ. And the blessings are material. It isn't, you know, in this group, it isn't that you get a deer and it isn't that you get a certain amount of money or certain things happen well for you. It is spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. It is, we have everything we need for life and godliness, as Peter says. We have all that we need to grow to become like Jesus, which is the ultimate goal for anyone who is a Christian, which really was a derogatory term that meant little Christ. <laughs> Other little Christ. Yes, we are supposed to be little Christ. We're supposed to look a lot like him and more and more and more. So again, the prayer request cards, and if you're seeing this online, you can send us a prayer request. I mean, think about what is God wanting to do in you and help us join you in prayer for that. Not the things, but the, the, the character transformation. And so all this is available in Christ. And now we go to verse 4, and here's what it says again. Just, he's giving you all these spiritual blessings. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So the title today is, I Choose You, God. Now, any of you have kids... Um, my kid's age, you know, late 20s, I don't know if you can hear I choose you without hearing Pikachu. <laughs> Pikachu, I choose you, because oh, that was fine. right in Pokemon. And so it's great that, you know, Pikachu got chosen, but who cares? This is a far bigger thing, but in a similar fashion, God chooses us. Can you imagine? Right? What we were talking about. The God of the universe chooses us. It's crazy. And not because we're so lovely or adorable or whatever, kind, good, valuable, desirable, because we're none of those. None of those. He chose us in Christ. 
in him. And the mind, absolutely mind-blowing thing to me is um, that it was before the foundation of the world. But this word chose is eklegomai, eklegomai, and it means to call out, select, like you would sam a choose a piece of land. If you're going to go buy a piece of land, like you would select that. You would carefully select that land. Or if you go to the grocery store and you're picky about your produce or your meat, how you would select the best cut or the best meat, uh, vegetables. That's the kind of choosing. It's a very careful selecting of what just what you want. And God chose us out for himself. But he did this before he made the world. You know, this is just absolutely mind-blowing to me that God chose us before he made the world. Thousands of years ago, he, he chose us already out to be out of this world, in his king, into his kingdom, to be his children before he even made the place. I don't know. I mean, is this too big for you? It's too big for me. But it also means that God knew, if he chose us, and we live 2,000 years post-Jesus, then he also knew he was going to send Jesus. Which also means that he knew that people were going to sin. That means that when he made the world, when there was no sin, he knew all this stuff was going to happen. And he made us anyway. If I was God, I would have like had that thought and go, well, I'll skip humans, we'll try something else, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean this pesky free will, and look where... I mean, he made the world anyway. He made us humans anyway, knowing that it would mean sending his son as a sacrifice for our sins. I don't, that is amazing love. To choose to make us anyway, in his image, knowing we were going to abandon him, betray him, deal with all the crud, having to send Jesus, him suffering all that he did so that we could be saved. So just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, and why did he choose us? What did he choose us for? To be holy and blameless. Choosing election always is for a purpose. We're not chosen at random, and we're chosen because God chose, not because there's any merit. There's no merit. There's no behavior that you did or didn't do that causes you to be chosen. It is purely God deciding to choose us, but he chooses us for something. And this something is to be holy and without blame before him. We are a free Methodist church. And free Methodists are one of the denominations that are in the holiness denomination. A denomination that actually believes and takes it seriously that God says, be holy as I am holy. God means it. Right? It's, uh, I forget where I wrote that down, but it is in Peter, 1 Peter 15, 16, I think it is. But be holy as I am holy. God is serious about that. That also means it's possible. Right? It would be ridiculous for the God of the universe to say something to us that we have no ability to do. Now, does that mean sinless? No. Does that mean perfect? No but it means set apart. The word holiness is to set apart. To um, It was used of the priests in the Old Testament when they were consecrated. They got a sign on, on their turban that said, holy to the Lord, set apart to the Lord. They had to take their old garments off and wash and put the priestly garments on, and they were set apart to the Lord. And that's how they could go into the Holy of Holies. Even though Jesus paid for our sins and we're forgiven, we still have no business bouncing into God's presence when we are heavily in the world. Not that he loves, you still can go, obviously, and you can ask for forgiveness, all that stuff is available, but we can't just be casual about our relationship with God because he's a holy God and he calls us to be holy. And he models that in the Old Testament by showing us that there was a whole ritual we had to go through before you even were remotely worthy. And they weren't even worthy. They were just not going to be dead. <laughs> right? Anybody who didn't come in a reverent awe, you know, awing God and making sure that they were cleansed, 
if they didn't do all that going before God, they got taken out. The punishment, punishment was death. God is holy and he is saying, be holy as I am holy. And so we are chosen in him, in Jesus, before the foundation of the world to be holy, to be set apart. Um, so we, yeah, we are, so we are set apart. And to be without blame. So this also harkens back to the Old Testament where the animals you brought as a sacrifice had to be without spot and with they had to be without blame. They had to be without blemish. They had to be whole and not, you know, don't give us they don't give God your leftovers. That applies to us, by the way. Don't give him a maimed, blind, <laughs> you know, broken animal that you can't use for anything anyway. You bring him a perfect animal, the one that you probably get the best price for, and that's how you would sacrifice the Lord. And now it is us that are that He chose to become holy, set apart, and without blemish. God is serious about us getting cleaned up and uh, living in a manner that honors God. So if you're a baby Christian, you're just starting out, there's one space for that. You take next steps. But if you've been traveling with Jesus for a while, you ought to look more like him. And if, if any of us have been slacking, then obviously, you know, I struggle with this just like anybody else. We have to get back on track. We have to ask him to keep working in us. In us. And it might be a thing. You know, he's not going to... It's not like a whole house makeover, right, instantly. It is going to just be one area at the time that he's saying, now we're going to work on this, I want this from you. Whatever the this is. We're back to food with me. <laughs> it seems to be forever the thing. Food and exercise are my, are my Achilles heel. Lack of exercise, that is. Um, and so he wants us to be holy and blameless before him. It's all about him. We need to live this life out for him. It is not looking good. It's not putting yourself together before you walk in the door. It's not having the right answer when we ask you a question. Who cares? It is holy and blameless before him who sees all. You can lie to us. But he knows. right? So be you. This community, we want you to be you. To, for it to be safe to be you so you can come with with, you know, like we were singing about, bring your dark addiction, bring whatever it is, and put it in the community, and let us surround you, and love you, and walk with you, so that you too can be on this path to holiness and being without blame. Another thing I want to point out about this is that we are simultaneously holy and blameless, and are still working on becoming holy and blameless. Totally confusing? Yep. So we are, Hebrews 10 tells us this, that we are now perfectly holy and blameless in God's sight. How? Because Jesus died for us and we are covered. So when God sees us, he sees us legally through Jesus who covers us. But practically, no. not so much. Not even though. Not, we're not there. And so practically, we are holy as we are being made holy, says Hebrews. You know, you are already holy as far as God is concerned. But as far as the process, you are continually working to become more and more like Jesus. And that is the highest and best goal. It's not fun. No. It's not feeding your, your particular pleasures and wants. It's not satisfying, you know, whatever. It's not even worrying about what other people think. It is living to an audience of one. You know? So if you like performing or if you like attention or if you like any of that kind of stuff, there's only one that we are living our lives before, and that's our holy God who wants us to be set apart from this world. And it, you know, in one way it's easier because the world's so crazy right now that who, want, who wants to be part of that nonsense, right? So in a way, but then that can set us to the other side. We'll become self-righteous. That's also not the way. Now we're off on the other side. So it's walking with Jesus, holy and blameless, before him in 
love. With God, it isn't about your behavior, it isn't that you shouldn't mess up, it is because He is a God of love. He invited us to join His family in love, and He wants to live that out, us to live that out in love before Him. So we are chosen to bear fruit, says John 15, 16. We are chosen to be conformed to the image of Christ, uh, Romans 8, 29. We are chosen for salvation through sanctification, and that means to be made clean and holy by the Spirit and belief in the truth, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13. We are chosen according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ just before time began craziness. 2 Timothy 1.9 We are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. We're made holy and blameless, not for our own purposes, but so that we can be used by God in this world, in His kingdom, to bring others into that relationship. That is um, it. And the gospel of grace is offered to all so to, to those who choose God, faith rests solely on God, not on self. We don't produce faith. God gives us that. It's all God's work, and we are chosen to be holy and blameless, an election to holiness of life. So that's what I want us to think about as we... Um, it's about our identity, right? Who are you? I want to hear, well done, you good and faithful servant, when I get to heaven. That's my only goal. Yes. Ultimately, I get distracted at times, but yeah, yeah, you know, it's what tops a hundred and some hundred years down here, somewhere between 70 and 120 is realistic or eternity. What am I going to worry where I want to feel good? I don't know. Like, if I, if life down here isn't all, is a bit, isn't one big party, who cares? I'd rather have eternity in the pleasure of the sun. And that my life was about that. And I want us to be that church. I want true hope to be church where we seek to be those people so that others can find their hope in Jesus. Because we're not judging. It doesn't matter what you come looking like. We don't want people to come with masks. Just be real. You mess up, you mess up. Because holiness isn't perfection. Holiness is being set apart to Jesus for his purposes. So others may also find him. So think about what it is you would like to ask prayer for in this. And if for those who are joining us, if you have not yet accepted Jesus, then this, this actually doesn't apply yet, but it can. You can be chosen, and it takes just admitting that you're a sinner, asking for forgiveness, believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, who came and died for all your sins and rose again on the third day. Easter is coming. That's when we celebrate that he rose again and invite him to come into your heart and life. So if that's you, pray with me. If you need to return to Jesus, pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me. Thank you that you are the Son of God who came, that, that the Father decided this before he made the world, and that you came for me, that you are choosing me, and all I need to do is believe that you died for my sins, and that you rose again. And I invite you to come into my heart and life and be my Lord and Savior forever. And Lord, some of us just need to come back. And so we're saying, Jesus, forgive us. I'm coming back. I want to be chosen for holiness and blamelessness. And for the rest of us who, who are still journeying with you and will want to continue to journey with you, will you help us, God, to take this seriously, to not let this be just words or a lesson or a verse in Scripture, but help it to be a lifestyle. Help us to be those people that seek to live lives worthy of the calling that we have received, that we will live day after day to seek to be, come holy and blameless in your sight, in practice, because we're already that in, in reality, because we stand before you because of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, let's worship some more.